As someone who spends over eight hours every single day sitting at a desk, I've tried my best to make my setup as functional and as productive as possible. The problem is though, I use a laptop and depending on the laptop, ports and connectivity start to become a big issue. Take the M1 MacBook Air for example. It only has two ports and they both use a USB-C connection. Meaning if I want to attach literally anything other than USB-C, I need some kind of adapter or dongle. Even my 16 inch MacBook Pro with the additional ports has the same problem. When you have a ton of stuff on your desk that needs to be plugged in every single time you move your laptop, it becomes annoying. Take me for example, I need ethernet, an audio interface, charging, an external monitor, a NAS, and multiple USB-A devices. And if I want all of that, my only option is a dock. Like this one, the CalDigit TS4 Thunderbolt 4 dock. With just one cable, I can connect to every one of the 18 ports on the dock to access everything. The question is though, is this dock actually good and worth the soul destroying price tag? Also, quick thanks to NordPass for sponsoring this video, but more on that later. Starting with form factor, taking a TS4 out of the box, you get the power adapter, which is fairly chunky, a Thunderbolt 4 cable, and two rubber strips. The overall form factor is surprisingly small and compact. The metal chassis is quite hefty and sturdy, and it has rubber on one side so you can use it upright. Although you can also install those two rubber strips if you want it to sit flat on your desk. I found that these strips didn't really work that well. The dock still sometimes slides when plugging in cables from the front and I need to hold it in place. I also think it's one of the better looking docks out there with a pretty minimal and Spartan metal design compared to some of the chunkier and more corporate-y looking docks. Unless of course you enjoy unicorn vomit and in that case, go with the Razer Chroma dock. So what ports do you actually get on this thing? Well, pretty much all of them. On the front, there's a UHS-2 SD and micro SD card slot. And yes, you can use both at the same time. There's an audio combo jack, two 10 gigabit USB-C ports, one of which provides 20 watts of power output, which is great for charging a phone, and a 10 gigabit USB-A 3.2 Gen 2 port providing 7.5 watts of power output. I found this was pretty much all the front connectivity I needed, although I would have liked an additional USB-A port. And with the release of the new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, the SD card slot will be redundant for some people. You also get a white status light at the front to indicate if the dock has power or not. Moving to the back, there are so many ports here that to save time, I won't read them all out to you individually. So pause the video if you want the specifics. I will, however, discuss some of the main ones. Starting with the host port, which is where you connect your computer to the dock. This is at the back, which is good. Some docks have it on the front for some strange reason, which results in a cable constantly strewn across your desk. Moving on to the ethernet port, 2.5 gigabit ethernet is an awesome and welcome upgrade but it's not something many people can take advantage of. Firstly, most internet plans cap out at one gigabit speeds. And if you're using a NAS like me, you'll need the existing hardware or capability like link aggregation, for example, to be able to max out the 2.5 gigabit bandwidth. Now I edit 4K footage from my NAS, so 10 gigabit is preferable, which this dock doesn't natively support unless you use a 10 gigabit to Thunderbolt adapter like I have. But if CalDigit had added 10 gigabit, I think it would have pushed the price on this dock which is already expensive to a point where it wouldn't make financial sense to most people. Moving on to Thunderbolt, you get two dedicated downstream Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 ports with 15 watts of power output. Unfortunately, these are only located on the back, meaning you have no easily accessible Thunderbolt options on the front to quickly and easily plug in external drives, for example. Now regarding external drive speeds, for certain high performance drives, you'll get slightly worse performance through the dock compared to directly attached to your Mac. But I've never personally found this to be a big issue and it's a problem with the controller on some individual drives and not the TS4 itself. Speaking of problems, are you one of those people who uses the same basic password for 
all of your online accounts? Well, NordPass is definitely something you should look into. If you get hacked or someone steals your password, they can gain access to all of your photos, videos, emails, credit cards, and more. Or worse, they can even steal your identity. NordPass is more than just a password manager. It's an essential cybersecurity tool allowing you to store all of your passwords in one place, use the autofill feature for quick logins, sync your passwords across up to six devices, and find out if your online account or credit card information has been leaked via the data breach scanner. Designed by cybersecurity experts, NordPass is used by more than 14 million users worldwide and is a zero-knowledge password manager, meaning no one else, including NordPass themselves, can see your encrypted vault. So get an exclusive NordPass deal plus four additional months for free using the link in the description or use code CREATEDTECH at the checkout. Getting back to the ports on the TS4, CalDigit went with a DisplayPort 1.4 port rather than HDMI. Why is that? Well, I find that an increasing amount of people are switching to high refresh rate, high resolution monitors. For example, the 4K 144Hz EVE Spectrum and DisplayPort is able to provide enough bandwidth for the image signal as long as you're using the right cable, of course. In a previous video, I hooked up my MacBook 4K 144Hz gaming monitor and my gaming PC to my CalDigit TS4 dock and was able to switch between a Mac-based productivity setup and a PC-based gaming setup with ease. However, if you want to connect a HDMI monitor, you can either connect an active display port to HDMI adapter or use a USB-C to HDMI adapter. Either option is relatively inexpensive. Quick side note here, this dock does not solve the single external display output restriction on entry-level M1 and M2 MacBooks. Specifically, the M1 MacBook Air, the M1 MacBook Pro, and the M2 MacBook Air and M2 MacBook Pro. You will still only be able to use one external monitor. And the only workaround to this is if you purchase a dock with Display Link technology, which this TS4 dock does not have. Now, as some of you might know, there is a previous version of this dock, and that is the TS3 Plus with Thunderbolt 3. There are several differences between the TS3 and the TS4. The first one you'll notice is the size. The TS4 is noticeably bigger and slightly heavier. The TS4 also has 18 ports versus 15 on the TS3. Notably, the front port selection is better and faster with them all being 10 gigabit versus five gigabit on the TS3. And the TS4 provides more power output for device charging like your phone, for example, with a 20 watt output versus just 7.5 on the TS3. Moving to the back, you of course get 2.5 gigabit ethernet versus one gigabit on the TS3. The display port on the TS4 is display port 1.4 versus 1.2 on the TS3. And this is important depending on what monitor you're currently using and what kind of bandwidth it needs. Speaking of bandwidth, the TS3 can do up to a 5K display at a 60 Hertz refresh rate or dual extended 4K displays each with a 60 Hertz refresh rate. The TS4 bumps the single monitor resolution up to 8K with a 60 Hertz refresh rate or dual 4K displays each with the same 60 Hertz refresh rate. For those of you using a single monitor, for high refresh rate monitors, 4K can go up to 144 Hertz, ultra wide 1440p can hit 180 hertz and standard 1440p can hit up to 240 hertz you'll also get an additional thunderbolt port on the ts4 which in my opinion is the most welcome upgrade however the biggest question you're probably asking is what's the difference between thunderbolt 3 and thunderbolt 4 well not much the throughput or speed is the same at 40 gigabytes per second. Thunderbolt 4 is essentially just a more strict version of Thunderbolt 3 to ensure that anything you see with Thunderbolt 4 branding has certain guaranteed capabilities, like minimum video output requirements or PC wake from sleep capability. That being said, Thunderbolt 4 is of course the most up-to-date version of Thunderbolt and will be relevant for many years to come. So if you're someone who likes to future-proof, I'd recommend getting the TS4 over the TS3 whenever possible. The only exception is if you can get the TS3 for an insanely good price. Speaking of price, I distinctly remember buying my original CalDigit dock, 
the TS3 Plus from the Apple Store a few years ago and just cringing at the price. And I think most people will do the same with the TS4. I think it's too expensive for most people, especially because in my opinion, a dock is the least most important part of your setup. My philosophy is in order of importance, desk and chair first, otherwise in 10 years, your back is gonna be busted, then monitor and keyboard plus mouse. Now I spend the majority of my budget on these things because I'm physically sitting in them, staring at them or touching them the entire time I'm at my desk. Anything else like a dock just aren't really things that most people want to spend a lot of money on. But at the end of the day, you do get what you pay for. I'm at my desk for sometimes 10 hours a day. I have a ton of stuff that needs to be plugged in. I also don't intend on buying a new dock for at least five years, possibly even 10, as long as the technology doesn't change too much. And when you look at some other Thunderbolt 4 docks out there, the price of the TS4 actually starts to look a little bit less eye-watering. Many of them have big compromises, like way fewer ports, or the host port is at the front, resulting in a Thunderbolt cable strewn across your desk 24 seven, or they're just as expensive as the TS4, but again, compromise in a lot of areas. So yeah, after six months of daily use, the experience has been pretty positive with the TS4. Very occasionally, I might run into an issue where my laptop won't connect to the monitor or the dock won't respond, but I can count the number of times this has happened on one hand and it's fixed in about 10 seconds by simply unplugging the power from the back and plugging it back in. Overall, there is a reason why this dock constantly pops up in reviews or online forums, and the previous version was even sold by Apple themselves on the Apple website. It is a good dock, even if you have to sell a kidney to afford it.